we created this entire dashboard with cursor in less than 10 minutes. Today, we're going to continue with this new video component. So we're gonna add this, this, and this. Let me explain how I found the idea, how I designed it, and then what we're gonna do in this video. So basically the idea is we're creating this um, micro styles, which will animate um, pictures. So it'll take like pictures and convert it into a video. And I found the idea in Exploding Insights and it's already validated because this is like the idea, this is the pain point, this is the lifetime revenue of this idea to make money. So it's validated solving a real problem. I designed the dashboard and video creation pop-up in Figma. So basically this is the this is the dashboard that we created last time and we've already designed and coded. But this time I've already created the pop-up which is gonna allow the user to create um, select their language, script, topic, and other video settings and they can click generate and then it'll generate the image of like their animated video. So that's a pop-up we're coding in, in today's video. So what we're going to be using is cursor, our favorite code editor. So this is like the code for the dashboard. It doesn't look that bad. Uh, I'm not a designer, but I'm pretty happy with it. Now what we need is the pop-up to create their video. I have a button here. If they click on new video, nothing happens, right? So we need to implement it where when they click it, there should be a pop-up and this this should sh this should show up like where it lets them select so what we're going to be doing is cursor and first take a screenshot of all the different pages we want to do that because in cursor we can drag and drop the images so basically you go in the cursor and you control l and now we just put in our, our image sometimes it will not copy and paste so manually copy and paste it Drag and drop those, so it's working. It looks like it's the same image. So I need to remove one of these and get the second image. So you guys can see that there's like, there's there's four four pages for this pop-up. So the first page is the language. The, the second page will be the script. And then there'll be a video settings and a generate page. I've tried adding two images before. I'm not sure if adding more than two will be good. I mean, I, I can test it for you guys. So let's just try adding all all four and see how that works. Copy and paste this. All right, and then the last one. So in the cursor context, I have four images plus the code of this current dashboard. We can convert these four images into code. This is the pop-up model that should appear once new video is clicked. Make it 100% as the image, mobile responsive, yeah, let's try this prompt. And this is basic HTML and view code. I use this for most of all my projects. So that's what I'm most familiar with. And you can see it created this component of create your video. Now the key thing is, will it actually follow directions and make sure that all four, four columns are copied and like all the inputs are copied? If it can do that, I would be impressed because we gave it four images. It'd be impressive if it copied those. Cursor finished it. Now what we need to do is click apply. So this will apply the current code changes that it made to our existing code. Let's accept and see if it follow directions. We need to update this code. I'll copy and paste this. For the button, it should open up this um, modal. Let's see. I refresh the page. Let me double check. I'm doing two re refreshes. Sometimes it doesn't save. Let's see. All right, nice. You can see that. Now the issue is I can't cancel it. So I, I need to fix that. So this is what I typically like to do. So I will in the same context. So I don't refresh the context. I will just add all the stuff I wanted to change first. If the user clicks outside the model, the model should close. So that's the first thing. And then because like I click here and it isn't closed. And I don't like the fact that the height of the model keeps changing. Keep consistent height for all pages in the model. That's something we need to change as well. And then I'm gonna tell it to implement dummy data when generate script is clicked. It should populate the script text area. When the user clicks on generate script, it should populate this. Modal should start on language tab. I think it started on the script tab. And then visual styles is not working. No indication when a button is clicked. When I click on the visual style, there's no visual indication. Same for caption style. Yeah, those are the current stuff. So five things I want to change. On the UI, it looks pretty same. You can see that it even copied the color, which I'm impressed by. The page will create video. This one is, I mean, it's like the padding and whatnot could be improved, but 
the the text was all copied over. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. The create your video part, we can improve the, the padding to make it wider. Aside from that, like all of the text plus the buttons and all like the different order of like the, the text area plus the button, it was all copied over. Let's see what it does for our suggestions. I told it to do five suggestions and I listed out the, the five things. Sometimes it'll tell you what it did at the bottom. So here, here are all the stuff that I changed, but typically what I like to do is just, I will apply the changes then manually check to make sure all the directions because sometimes it'll, it'll say it did something but it actually implemented it the wrong way i just manually check and click on um, apply save your code then refresh the page if the user clicks outside the model it should close this one was not followed let me see if this was saved okay now it's working so sometimes you refresh uh, sometimes so so it's starting on language which is what we asked for in the in one of these and then yeah, now the height is also the same. So you can see that I, I said to make a consistent height. So now it's all the same. It start on language. I can click out uh, and closes it. And then let's see. So generate script is also working. When I click on generate script, generate this. This is great. It's now indicating when I click on a style. I don't really like this UI uh, or user experience where it tells you, like, please fill out. Cause like, I'm, I'm not sure like what to even fill out. So I will probably change that, but yeah, let's, let's change that. So. Hmm. I'm actually not sure how you improve this UX. Maybe like instead it can list out what the user should change. A, a, a better user experience is probably like they, they, they can't go, go to the next page until all of the um, required things are filled out. That way, like they can't just jump between pages. So I will tell it the user should not be able to jump between pages. If the current pages required inputs are not filled out so when the user gets generated all right <clears throat> so i just told it to fix it so that the user cannot like go between pages if the current pages inputs are required but not filled out so basically the user has to fill out each page before they go next because right now you can just jump here and then click on next and like click generate video but now there's inputs that are not filled out I told it to fix that and give it reasoning. Sometimes if you give it reasoning why you want something done, it will make the solution a little bit better because it understands your actual end result that you want. So it did that and let's, let's see. Yeah, so you can see that it made all these changes. Let's just click apply and see how it looks. It added more validation. The next button is now disabled. This looks good. All right. This page is not getting long, almost 500 pages, but I mean, 300 pages. Ideally, we should have this modal in a different file, but we're optimizing for speed. So having everything in the same file is, is fine. There is another bug where the user sh can still jump between tabs. They can click next if the language is not filled out. That's a bug. Yeah, it's making changes to the tabs logic so the user can't jump, jump around. Let's click. I'm not sure if this was actually applied. This was not applied yet. So we gotta apply that and then we have to apply. Yeah, so these. Sometimes it's a bit annoying because it'll, it'll give you it'll give you three code blocks that you need to change and you, you have to separately apply each code block because like this, this code block was not applied yet either. I'm not sure if that's a bug or not. Sometimes you just have to manually apply all three code blocks. All right, I am just going to manually copy and paste because it's not applying correctly. This is the code for the tab. So it has like this advanced logic where I guess now you can just skip between the tabs and it shows if the tab is complete, which I guess will help allow the user, help allow the user if, if, if they can jump between the different tabs. So let's see. I mean, the UI has been messed up, so that's not great. All right, okay, so the thing is, we, we, we can jump between tabs now, but the, the, the logic is working. So this, this video is getting long, so I'm not gonna like show you guys what, like show you guys me fixing this, but basically what, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to fix the width of this entire model so text aren't overflowing.